Internal and external communication. Today, the number of professionals who pass out of management schools far exceed the combined figure of students who aspired to graduate in business studies ever since it was made part of the global curriculum. Just a few decades earlier, business acumen was considered hereditary and thus it was firmly believed that being astute and knowing the family's business model well was enough to ensure success and continuity. With the demands of global expansion, the lack of business etiquette, or rather the lack of communication skills, has become far more evident than it would have been in a sheltered commercial environment. With globalization making inroads into every sphere of business, it is necessary for individuals associated with industry to improve their business and social skills. The adage of the first impression being the last impression is quite apt in the 21st century where decisions are made in a New York minute. Fortunately, the first step to learning effective communication is within your own organization. The 21st century has brought with it the urgent need to adapt to vital changes in communication between organizations and audiences. In the context of both written and spoken communication, the concept of open communication channels is rapidly beginning to replace the archaic and often misinterpreted information channels of previous decades. This directly translates into sharing the communicated data with a larger group of individuals who work as a team or share the same set of responsibilities. However, it does not imply that highly sensitive or classified information will be shared with individuals who have little or no role to play in processing such information. Today, technology and communication are interlinked. While you may not want to share every minute business secret with the world, you definitely would like to communicate to a larger audience about the merits or highlights of your business. Moreover, you certainly want your stakeholders and clients to know how you have upgraded or are planning to upgrade your business to cater to their curiosity and to ensure that your market and investor base expands. The PR team will have to identify and include individuals and groups within the organization who should be groomed to close the loopholes affecting communication channels within the organization. They should also ensure that the larger picture of projecting a presentable image of the organization to outsiders is further streamlined. In an organizational crisis, especially in industry, when a standoff between factory workers and managers can quickly escalate and affect production, managers often overlook the fact that effective internal communication between the senior management and the workers could have stemmed the impasse at the beginning. Traditionally, managers have never believed that a lack of effective internal communication has been the major cause for the collapse of many large organizations. The managerial staff was often prone to high-handedness. This coupled with the inability to connect to the working class created a huge rift. Strikes, shutdowns and violent protests were rampant till the need to address the needs of the larger working majority was given a thought to. The most important question industry leaders and senior managers should introspect upon is how internal communication, or rather the lack of it, affects business. Is the business model unilateral? Does it only cater to the organization or is it all encompassive? In the latter, the growth of the organization should reflect upon the well-being of its employees. 
There are two divergent points of view. While some managers do not regard internal communication as anything more than a message service, others firmly believe that effective internal communication can be a vehicle of change. The feedback should be from the lowest rung of the organization to the highest rather than vice versa. This means structuring organizational divisions in such a manner that there is cohesiveness, openness, and effective channels of communication in either direction. If the workers in a particular organization want to reach the CEO, their message should reach him without any dilution or fabrication. Pamela Mounter calls internal communication a corporate clue that helps build teams, reinforce pride in working for a company, and encourages people to work that bit harder to beat the competition. Cultural Perspectives in Communication Every organization has a predefined value system that should ideally aid employees in fulfilling their tasks successfully. The major challenge for those in the echelons of the corporate ladder is to maintain equilibrium between organizational values, visions, targets, and tasks. The social-political perspective suggests that crisis management is unlikely to be successful without a reformation of organizational leadership and corporate culture. Most systems of internal communication are lopsided. They tend to stifle morale, creativity, and free speech. What an organization needs is a balanced method whereby employees are provided effective channels to discuss issues with each other and with supervisors. Effective internal communication also involves curtailing the grapevine and ensuring that the correct information is passed on. Although the expression, there is a ring of truth behind every rumor, might be partially true, it cannot be used as an excuse to spread misinformation or partially correct information, as this can sometimes threaten the very existence of the organization. Under crisis conditions, an organization's problems will always be highlighted. There are certain triggers or crisis agents which are partially caused due to incomplete or undeveloped information systems. The crisis agents. Non-existence of positive value sets or differences within the organization. Unbalanced communication and a lack of information systems that would ideally allow employees to understand the organization's objectives and thus involve them in the process of growth. Predominance of informal communication rather than formal channels of communication within the organization. If a manager is not capable of controlling internal communication with employees, he loses authority and the opportunity to attain long-term organizational objectives. The moment employees think that addressing their concerns is taboo within the organization, the productivity, due to low morale, is most certainly going to be affected adversely. When employees speak of submissiveness, indifference, and conformism, it should be taken as a warning sign that something is not right and should be addressed immediately. Co-orientation is the need of the hour in business organizations today. Both employees and managers should be aware of each other's strengths and weaknesses so that they can work together as a cohesive force rather than an unproductive fractured organization split along fault lines. There are various factors that lead to an internal communication crisis. These factors are namely lopsided internal communication, ineffective leadership, informal information system, and 
incorrect value systems. External communication. The exchange of information and messages between an organization and other organizations or individuals is defined as external communication. This basically implies communication outside the formal structure of an organization. The main channels of external communication are effective public relations, media relations, marketing, and advertising. Successful businesses utilize external communication to control their image and achieve their business goals and sales targets. Public relation is in a sense relationship management versus reputation management. Thus, understanding the needs, emotions and attitudes of your target audience and conveying this as an effective sales pitch is an important function of external communication. The goals of effective external communication are to facilitate the exchange of information between the organization and its stakeholders, suppliers and investors. Goals of communication should be specific to the issue or point of discussion, attainable, not imaginary and time bound. The various modes of effective external communication are meetings and press conferences, print and broadcast media, annual reports, brochures, etc. This pie chart illustrates the various modes by which we communicate. Strategies for successful external communication Businesses often use psychological and sociological knowledge to create a positive image to influence their clients and investors. The message is broad-based and is all about sending out good vibes to the audience. For example, a hospital may hold free health camps or a car manufacturer might sponsor a rally to promote their business. Effective public relations. A business typically engages in different strategies in managing its external communications. The approach used will vary depending on the circumstances, purpose and intended recipient. For example, a business will communicate in a different way if it is reaching out to investors and shareholders and it will adopt an entirely different strategy while dealing with potential customers.